um, lower than recommended. So I'm alive again. <clears throat> what that shows to you? Nothing. Most about. Tell me some good news. You have stopped streaming. But I, I'm back. It should be back. So is it okay or not okay? Okay, still delays. Yeah. Pretty significant delays. At least your voice matches your picture. Very good. So we have some progress. Yes. Okay, so let's see if we can go with, with the crown rules. Okay, so work, simulation work is something that was worth of 30%. 30, 30 uh, this will be done individually. You will get the assignment at week, well, in week 44. 35%. 35%. No, I'm sorry, 35%. That's correct. So 35%. In class quizzes, total of 25 point, 24 points. And this is where you need um, circuit. So online participants, this will be a good time to install the circuit to your mobile phone or iPad, or if you are not using any of those devices, you can log yourself to Socrative.com. This is the way to get into Socrative. So uh, these instructions go such the way that you first of all need to select the student uh, locking. And you need to type the room number which, or the room name, which is L-U-T, L-U-T, all right? Then the next thing is that you need to put your student number there. And the student number goes such the way that if you have zeros in your student numbers, don't use them. Take them off automatically. Some of you have, some of you don't. So just put the number and you're ready to get in. And momentarily, there's gonna be first in-class quizzes, making already um, a little bit of contribution to your final grading. So, are you already nervous? Not yet. All right? So that's what how, this is how it goes. All the material is available in the model side. So there is nothing except the stuff that is a model base. So if it is not mentioned in a model base, I will not use that against you. Meaning that I'm not gonna ask that in a written exam, that I'm not gonna use that in a simulation assignment and so on and so forth. So only the material that is in a Moodle database will be used in this course, okay? And the handouts, there is a two-part lecture notes. The first part is already available, so print that. Keep it with you all the time and read it every day. Read it, material in advance. Next week, we're gonna discuss about velocities and acceleration. Read it prior to lecture. That really makes your life easier. And then there are uh, tutorial notes, lecture notes, which is a PowerPoint presentations. All that is available in a Moodle based and the, uh, homework assignments. Everything is in a Moodle place, Moodle database. So please use it. There's another package of material, which is called Temeco. So these are pre-recorded material about how you can do the simulation. Also <coughs> recommended it that you will take a look. So those are the videos three to five minutes length in length, and they are kind of the material that makes it easy to understand the subject matter. So please use that. Okay, so we, <laughs> okay, so we're back. So, uh, so that's another material that is needed. Okay, my instructions to you, my guideline to you, what is that you need? to pass this course. Trust yourself, because some of the things I'm gonna to explain to you, you will be astonished. Like, really, in this planet, is it possible to have something like that? Yes, it is possible. And not just that, but you can also learn it. We go slowly. We're gonna hold your hand, and we're gonna make sure that you will learn it,
but we need to see an effort from your end. So trust yourself, have this can-do attitude. That's what we need, can-do attitude more than anything else. And that's uh, what I recommend you to have. You're all here in a university, so you have big brains. You, yeah, now you just need to use your big brains. Yes, you have. I know that each of you have the big brains, so no worries. All right, as mentioned here, follow the lecture, lecture notes, read the handouts every week. You skip the week and your life will be difficult. Because as I mentioned, the progress, how things getting to be increasingly difficult is amazing, is amazing. This week is, you're gonna laugh, like, oh my God, this is so simple, so should I skip next week? No, you should not. You should come here because the next week it's going to be already pretty difficult. Week after that, you're not going to find your way out from this lecture room without my help. I need to tell you, hey, there is a door over there because you're wondering here, what happened? No, I'm very confused. And then you do this all the time. <laughs> all right. So do exercises, do everything by yourself. There's an exception. And those are in-class quizzes. In-class quizzes, I recommend you to set up the WhatsApp group or discuss with your fellow student. So as soon as I put the so this uh, in-class quizzes on, communicate, ask from your friends, which is a correct answer? Which should I put here? What should I put here? Which one is a correct? That's completely okay. Okay, do exercises yourself. Here's the first in-class quiz. So let's see how this goes. So uh, I'm gonna put this live. And you can answer to me and one out of the many options is correct how can how one can pass this course by having can do attitude is this the only thing that is needed so if you have a can do attitude can you pass the course by following the lectures and other material every week is this enough or by doing exams simulation work weekly assignments in class quizzes in an acceptable way more than 35 percent of out of the 100 that should be by the way 110 by networking, party every day. Which one is a correct? Uh, so let me uh, take myself to Sokati, which I, I, I see that I lost it in the, all this technical mess. So I'm gonna go here. Are you guys ready in the Sokati? Gonna launch a squeeze. This one? All right. Oh, you don't see anything at all. How come? Because I'm connected all the time. All right, I can see that I have 138 students in this class in total. Okay, so finally it's back. Seven students already answered to this uh, soccer team. By the way, is this already, is this looking okay? In, uh, yeah, there was some problem, but it's... It seems okay. to be okay. But I, I believe for, for the rest of this semester, we have to think about this kind of poor connection. Yeah. The connection was not a problem. along the way, that problem happened again. Yeah, because the connection was not a problem uh, last year and year that year ago. Uh, when, I mean, two years back because uh, I was in my office all the yes. time and I was connected using a cable. Don't you have that option here? I might have, but I need to take this uh, entire system with me. So because I'm, you know, this one here is not getting into my computer. Oh, I should have that adapter, and um, maybe that would be a one way to go. That could be a one way to yes, go. Yes, we can ask for that. You know, from the guy that well, I have this, I have this. this, I have this adapter in my office. I could use that, perhaps. Yeah, I think we need it because this connection needs to be strong, super strong. Otherwise, it's all the time this. Do you want me to go and get it? No, no, I think it's too late. All right, so uh, how much I'm blocking the view from this, this uh, uh, Quite a bit, I not think. much, I believe. And yeah. I believe it's not important because they have their they, own they can choices. see it already. All right, so I have thirty-three students already entered the answer. You guys already entered your answer, or all right? 
Okay, did you communicate with your fellow student? Also, Please communicate. Okay. Also, I think they have started to talk about correct answers on the YouTube. Yeah, channel. YouTube, yeah. Should I tell them to Yeah, start YouTube it? is not the way to share this information. I mean, that is okay too, because usually, is a, let me tell you this by an experience. Usually there's a guy that would like to make other life difficult. So he, he or she intentionally put the incorrect answer, hoping that uh, this is the uh, way to go. So it's okay to communicate there too. Uh, and do you still want to have that match that you had last year, that, that kind of lottery, to guess the Oh, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe, okay, here's another competition. So would you guys like to guess, like, uh, what is the success rate here? Is it going to be 100% success rate, meaning that each one of you knows what is the correct answer? Or is it going to be lower than 100%? What are the guesses you have? Lower than 100%. Lower? How much lower? What is your guess? Please uh, use a uh, 90 percent. 90 percent. I'd say 85 percent. 75 percent. 85. 85. 85 percent. 78. 78. Okay, so we're kind of in that neighborhood. I'm saying 100 <laughs> percent because it's, uh, it's it's clear. It's clear. You know, it's the only way that it might happen because all of the participants are here. Do you remember <laughs> last year? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how many are we still expecting to get? How many more answers? Uh, 48 people are, are, are online. You guys already entered all the answers, so we have some 20 people here, 60 so people in total. Yes, 60. All right, I'm going to leave that uh, for a little while and get back to that momentarily. And uh, reading view. This seems to be okay too. So maybe I can use this one, because this automatically calls correctly. Okay, introduction. So that, for sure, I will do today. So uh, what is an objective of this course, and what simulation means? What, what, what the heck is this thing called simulation? Which I'm sure you all have heard about it, but what that stands for us, people from Department of Mechanical Engineering, and how is that you can possibly build a um, simulation model? And why? Why? Why to do this whole thing? Why bother? Why it makes sense? Okay, so objective of this course, we wanted to explain you theories and techniques that are used in simulation of dynamic systems. And uh, computer simulation is kind of pleasant, and it's actually very pleasant in the sense that it needs no thinking, but it needs systematic actions. There's a certain things that I'm hoping you to follow, certain steps. And once you follow those steps, you will automatically create something which is called equations of motion. These equations of motion are dis describing how it is that the system behaves in forward of time. And once we're solving something that is called equations of motion, then you can see what is a response in forward of time. So no thinking needed, like in the case of uh, if you've been participating in a course like Dynamics 1 and so on and so forth, there you need to see relations of different things, which make it a very much hated stuff. So people usually, when you ask from the regular student, which subject matter you hate the most? 95% the answer is Dynamics. And they hate it because Dynamics is painful because of all this thinking. We don't do thinking here, but we act systematic. And that's pretty much all is that is needed. Do you know there's a method called finite element modeling, finite element method, which is used in a structural strength analysis? That too is a systematic approach. There's a lot of similarities to that, except we are looking for dynamics. That's what we're going to do. All right, so uh, I would like you to understand what the computer simulation can offer to you and how it can be used in a different product processes. and. Uh, no, not just the product development, but something that is called data-based businesses. What is that um, simulation can do and how it can be used in a different ways. Uh, also, it's very important to understand what is the relationship between the computer simulation and reality, because they are not the same thing. But they're representing, or let's say that the simulation wanted to replicate the reality, how well it can do that, and what are the weaknesses related to simulation. Those are the stuff that I would like to explain to you. Okay, 
And you will also learn the use simulation tool, which is uh, Simscape in this time. Uh, that's going to be Sura's responsibility. Okay, so we're going to look at the machines in a little bit of different point of view than you've been used to do. So we're going to use a machine as a, as a system which is assembled entities. So uh, typically there is a course, let's say the course like this dynamic course that is focusing on mechanical structures, like this point here. Oh, this is not allowing me to make a drawings here. Let me see if I can change this view. This one. Ah, just a second. <coughs> so whatever this is connected is not gonna show me proper way. This slider is not allow me to write anything here. But when I do this, it should be okay. And it's Yep, it's perfect. So we were here. <clears throat> so when you look at this cell cores like dynamics, it's focused on mechanics, mechanical components. You know that the machine is not just a mechanical components, but mechanical components need to be actuated one way or another. There are many different ways to make it happen. You can use hydraulics, you can use electric drives, you can use pneumatics, whatever you want. But it's very important to understand that the machine is assembled such the way that actuators and the mechanical components are coupled together. That's why it's not making much of a sense to look at just the <coughs> mechanical components, like this one, or actuators, hydraulics, like this one. But once you couple them together, then you really can understand how is the performance of machine. That's exactly what we're going to do in this course. So we want to look at the things in a different point of views. We wanted to combine different disciplines. And that's the way we can analyze things that are hydraulic driven. Very important. Sometimes control system makes a big difference. That's something we're going to discuss, discuss briefly in this course, but just briefly. So we're going to look at the things as, as, as machines are. You know, if you look at this hydraulic driven crane, there are Steel structures like pilar here, lift arm, swing arm, and they are combined together using joints. But it's not the machine yet. You have to have hydraulics to make this system to move. And when it moves, then you can actually analyze the real machine, as you can find that in real life. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in this course. Now, <clears throat> what the dynamic simulation, what the simulation of dynamic system means. It's not very complicated. So we're going to use something that you know already, or you have known already, I don't know, 20 years or so. So we're going to use uh, simple laws of physics. Newton's second law, which says external applied force is equal than inertia forces. That's mass multiplied by acceleration. But the difference between this course and the laws of physics that you have used to deal with is that we can explain or we can express these laws of physics in a way that the computer can do the solution for you. That's the difference. That's where we need these matrices, vectors, because computers can handle matrices and vectors very well. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. All right, so like this equation, you can see over and over again, but the way that the computer can solve this equation for you all right, and usually, you know, this is external applied forces, inertia forces, not very complicated. So we're solving here acceleration, and then we integrate from acceleration velocities, and for velocities, we're going to integrate position. Not too difficult. All the difficulty is to how to apply this to any kind of application you want. And that's where this computer simulation comes into play. All right. And this is how it looks. After, what is it, six weeks, you all realize, okay, what this equation stands for you, what it means. You will understand all the details and it all makes sense to you. So you will recognize, oh, this is a quadratic velocity vector and it means this and that. This is Lacrosse multipliers. 
it means this and that. That all becomes to be clear to you. This, by the way, this equation is based on Newton's second law. So is external applied force is equal than inertial forces. But when you look at it, it's like, really? Now, yes, really. That's what it is. This one here is an acceleration, but coordinates that computers can understand. And here's a Lagrange multipliers that are related to joints. Joints are the ones that are combining bodies together. Not too complicated eventually, but we need a few steps to take us to that level. All right. And then we can also describe the hydraulics that are used shown here. So all those will become clear to you as well. Then we're combining them together. Okay, why simulation? You know, there is a, something that is called medical condition. It's pretty severe medical condition and there is no uh, bills to fix that. And that is called simulation disease. It's awful medical condition. It means that you don't do thinking by yourself anymore, ever. But instead you're asking computer to do all the work for you. And that's not the way to go. Simulation, computer simulation is helping you to learn. And sometimes computer simulation is called as an accelerated learning process. It's just accelerate your learning. So it helps you to understand relation in the machine. It helps you to understand this and that but you still need to make an interpretation about all the results. That's what it's doing for you, nothing else. All right, so take a look at this YouTube channel and there are a few examples available. I will show some examples to you. Oh, here is a one bit prior to that. There is a, what exactly we're gonna do? So we're gonna use a method which is called multi-body system dynamics. Multi-body system dynamics, you're gonna learn well, if we have a time today, you will learn what exactly is this multibody and how is that we can get started in a kinematics, description of particles. There are commercial softwares, many of them available. This course we can use Simscape, but there are many others like uh, Adams, LMS, Virtual Lab, and so on and so forth. Many different options available. All right. So here comes a few examples. So this is a example about the biomechanical system. So I have here a model of uh, human lower body and uh, what we're doing in this model is that we want to learn how the different exercises are introducing the strain and strain rates to human body, bones. Why we want to do that? Well we wanted to do that because it's known by athletics and medic and uh, animal test that the strain and strain rates makes bone to be stronger. But this is a quantity that is very difficult to, to measure. There are only few bones close to surface that you can actually measure it. One is this, tibia. Tibia is pretty close to surface. And there have been studies where, you know, you take a knife, you make a cut to tibia, you take a grinder, take all the flash away, you attach the strain gates to your bone. You put all the flash back together. You take off a lot of painkillers and then you walk. And the others are measuring the strains in your tibia. And that's what you can be made by using practical measurements. But typically the area that is in interest is this hip region. Hip region, there's no way to measure the strains anymore because you take a big knife and make a cut all the way here to the bone, you're gonna die you will not survive. So the only way to measure the strains in case like, or the location of hip is using computer simulation. So we have here a computer model of human. Human is doing different kind of exercises and we're monitoring the strains and strain rates. Example about how simulation can offer you quantities that are very difficult to measure, but they can be estimated using computer simulation. Just an example. Here is a, another example about the real-time simulation, which is a subject matter one entire lecture uh, in period number two. Uh, this shows a little bit about how is a harvester machine, how it can be operated, and how is it we can have a better understanding about custom meter lines using game-based real-time simulation. So that's where the gamification, game-like systems comes in a discussion, and you're gonna hurt, you're gonna learn them 
I think it is the last lecture, maybe not the last, and the one that is just before the last. So, a few examples about real time simulation, and uh, that's something that we will discuss shortly on next week as well. Then, uh, one thing that is very much in the fashion at the moment, I must have some bad news. I look like that because you've got like. So, do we have bad news? We do. <laughs> so what is it? So stream is. Should I tell you the truth? Yes. <laughs> oh, there's some problem. Okay. I believe for the next session we have to bring that cable. Cable. That's the. I guess that that's the only way, because I guess that the connection is not healthy enough, which I don't get it because uh, it's not connected to my my mobile phone and it says that this uh, connection is strong. You know, because it goes out. Uh, it was good, but happened. Okay. All uh, right. It's good again. So it's good again. Yes. I will close this introduction, and I think the, we'll see if we have a time to think about what is a how is a description of rigid bodies. We might not have time to do it today, but this introduction is a way to get started. Very easy way. All right. So. The one thing that is very much in fashion is artificial intelligence based control, artificial intelligence based systems. Um, they're all very good idea, but the problem is that the artificial intelligence is typically something that needs quite a bit of data to work properly. Uh, the data can be obtained from measurements, from real machines, or it can be obtained from simulation. And of course, we prefer to simulate, of course. Here's uh, two different models. So this is something that we're using technique that is called faster than a real-time simulation. And this faster than a real-time simulation means that we're computing extremely much faster than a real-time. And it kind of gives us the opportunity to see what happens in the future. Because we are making a forecast well, how things will be after a little while. Not longer time perspective, but a few seconds ahead. Where we have a really a lot of computational power, we can have a number of motion scenarios. Each one of them can be projected in the future. And then there is an algorithm based on artificial intelligence that is selecting the most desired one. And this is now used to this pendulum where there is only two bodies. And the pendulum purpose is to keep it in upright position, which is not too complicated, but it can do the job. Then this one here is based on another kind of a artificial intelligence algorithm, which is ranked first learning algorithm, which needs a quite a bit of data to understand the behavior of this dynamic system. This time I have a pendulum with the four bodies in a row. I want to keep it in upright position, and I've been teaching artificial intelligence by using one billion analyzes. Let me repeat, one billion analyzes. So it needs that much data to understand what is going on. And that tells a good, a good example how much data is needed to make something based on artificial intelligence to work properly. So here it goes. Very unstable. Think about four bends in a row, upright position. I don't think that the human can do it. Maybe the human can do two of them. I'm not sure about that. How many you can do, Mustafa? One, two. I don't know. All right, but here is a four, so it can still do the job. Okay, so let me move on. Here's an excavator that's based on uh, control of artificial intelligence. This too is based on reinforced learning, so there is no human. So there is a just a AI algorithm that is learning how to operate an excavator. Go slowly. It's not as fast as a human can be, but it's learning all the time. And the best way to test different algorithms and see which one is the most proper for this particular application, simulation will do the job for you. It's a good example of what the simulation can do. Okay, but then one more thing. You know, there's a big trend in industry, that traditional business models that are based on making products, making hardware, making excavators, other different kind of gadgets, are increasingly to be replaced by business that is based on data and knowledge. And you can see that all over. You can see that, you know, the mobile phone is a good example. You know, it becomes to be difficult to make money out of the mobile phone. There may be one exception to that, but typically it's easier to make money making software, something which is an application inside of this hardware. That's an example. 
And that same trend happens in the mechanical engineering as well. You know, the cars, some of the cars already are asking monthly payments that you can get an access to certain applications, certain apps. And I think the Tesla is one example in that. And that seems to go, the mechanical engineering seems to go in the same direction. That's where the simulation is extremely powerful. And it helps to create these database service businesses, database businesses in general. So it's definitely needed. So here is summary. Why? Simulation. And here's a list. It helps to understand the customer needs. When you use a real-time simulation, you can ask customers, you like this or you hate it. Simple like that. Because it's a physics-based simulation, it's a close representation of reality, so it can do the job. So it helps to introduce new service-based data, services based on data and knowledge, shorten the product development time, which is a one single product process out of the many. So just an example. It improves the product quality and performance and makes the product to be more reliable. So those are the reasons to participate in this course. Is it like this? So we have a deal. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. So you're not going to leave. You will because we've been struggling with these technical difficulties so long that soon we need to go. I also need to go back home. So sorry about that. All right. Mathematics needed. Mathematics needed is this. There's a list of items that I'm explaining that takes, this list takes you to different, different pages in Khan's Academy. Khan's Academy, if you are not aware of that, is extremely, extremely good page, uh, page to learn mathematics. So uh, things that I'm explaining are related to Khan's Academy. So if there's something that you don't remember, you simply do not remember how to take a partial differentiation. Go and refresh your mind from Khan's Academy. If you don't remember how to multiply matrix with the vector, Khan's Academy will do the job for you. So use it. And there's a separate PowerPoint that tells where exactly you can find what. Okay, that's about the mathematics. What do you say? Should we look at this or should we not? This description of rigid bodies or should we leave it next week because we only have five minutes left. I mean, officially five minutes. We can go a bit longer if this is okay to you guys. But you cannot file an official complaint about me. <laughs> All right, so can we go? Yeah, probably, yeah. All right, now you wanna be my friend and, and I really appreciate that. All right, so as I say, we're gonna use a method which is uh, multi-body dynamics, multi-body system dynamics. Uh, this is a really uh, powerful and beautiful method that allows you to create that equation of motion automatically. You know, this is a method that can be applied to a wide variety of different applications, but not all the applications. So this is tailor-made for something which is called multi-body systems. Now, what is this multi-body system by definition? Well, the multi-body system is a system that this, first of all, as the title implies, is a system that consists of multiple bodies. So there are many bodies. And these bodies are connected together via joints. So there is a different kind of mathematical constraints that limits the most impossibilities of bodies. And that's what makes multi-body system. In a multi-body system dynamics, we do not make any assumption regarding to some of the lectures they have these sticks, not these sticks. Okay, so there's no sticks. Okay, in a multi-body system dynamics, we do not make any assumption regarding the magnitude of rotation. You know, the bend loom is a good example. And if you look at your nodes from the cores, dynamics one and two, and so on and so forth, typical assumption you have made, even though that you might not recognize that, is that the rotations are small. Bendulums you're analyzing by assuming that the rotation is plus minus 5 degrees, 10 degrees. When you have a small rotation like that, you can linearize the system. And that's beautiful because when you linearize the system, there are quite a bit of analytical solutions available. We don't do that. 
we are not making any assumption regarding the magnitude of a rotation. So we can analyze the pendulum that goes here to here. Sounds like a minor thing, but mathematically, this is a big deal because this will lead automatically to nonlinear equations of motion. And when you have nonlinear equations of motion, there's no analytical solutions available. But instead, you have to simulate and you have to solve this equation of motion in forward of time using time integration scheme. That's the deal. All right. So like I said, multi-body system dynamics is a system that consists of multiple bodies. And these bodies are connected together via joints. All right. So now I have here two systems. A, which is a crankshaft mechanism, and B, which is a more system consists of multiple bodies, and uh, there is a spring connection between these systems. One only is a multi-body system, but which one? Any ideas? Well, let's vote. B. Who's, so B is, is or is not? It is a multi-body. So you say this is a multi-body system. Very good. Who is, a, who, is, who is voting B as a multi-body system? So, but, but should we vote more? So B, who is voting A? This, uh, you guys are voting A. Yeah, so. Because it's correct. You guys are correct. Why they are correct? Because remember what I just said. You know, a system where the bodies are connected you together via joints. Here they are connected together via springs, which is not the joint. Okay, why is this significant? It's significant because, you know, this crankshaft system is a system with one degree of freedom. So this can move in a one way only. And I can take a hold of the piston body, this guy here, and I can move the piston to go left and right, like this. And when I move this left and right, bodies connected that will follow in a certain way because of the joints. This simplifies, kind of simplifies the system. Whereas the other one, if I take a hold of this body here and I move that downwards, I do not know, based on the kinematics, how this body and this body moves. I can solve them by using forces, but not kinematics. Remember, if you remember this from the dynamics course, kinematic is an analysis which you do not look at the forces. No forces at all. Just most, just most. All right. So we will repeat this millions and millions of times. So if you are like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, we're gonna keep on repeating stuff. Right? No, it's easy. Okay, okay. I'm related. Very good. Very good. Okay, so can I ask something? Yeah. Here is a. Stop the ring. How come it stopped the ring? There was some delay there. Still there's some delay, but it won't be so quick. So let's see. Come on, I have two. Let me think. I have four slides that I want to go ahead and get so when we learn from today's lecture, the so first thing we learn from today's lecture, and the good thing we learn is that don't ever trust on more updates. <laughs> this game of cable is a way of happiness. Alright, let's be We learn about the basics of the tool, but that's because I'm not going to have too much time. I'm going to have to tell the story as well. But I'm going to have to this course, and then learn about the concept of the concept. Can you add it? Do you have a candy add Yes, I can. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so uh, is it a sweet bath? Yeah, because I didn't put it on there. Because uh, we have a problem with streaming again, and see that it's not happening. Which is uh, weird, very, very weird. I don't understand why it's heading this way. Is it still like that? It's like when it gets good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, when it gets bad, it stays bad. It stays bad. It stays bad. 